All right, boys, before we get into the podcast, you guys saw the new Nelk video in our trip with Hasbulla. We brought him to the USA. We dropped some brand new Full Send Hasbulla merch. It's going absolutely insane. There's a full collection right now on fullsend.com. Full Send Hasbulla. We got a ton of vintage shirts. They're really, really fire. I pop them up on screen. Full Send Hasbulla. Go to fullsend.com, cop a piece, tag us and Hasbulla if you uh, cop one. Let's get into the podcast. All right, boys, so before we get into this pod, we're at Tin Roof right now. Every week on the podcast, we're gonna be shouting out bars that carry Happy Dad. So if you're a bar, if you work at a bar and you're watching this, or you own a bar, whatever, tag us on Happy Dad Instagram, all right? Because we're always looking out for bars that carry Happy Dad and we wanna support you guys. This week, we're shouting out Tin Roof, which uh, we're here right now. Shout out to Tin Roof. Shout out The Wharf in Fort Lauderdale, and shout out Rock Bar in Fort Lauderdale. We're here right now, you guys are all carrying Happy Dad. We love you guys. Yeah, take us on Instagram at Happy Dad. I want to shout out a bunch of bars. Let's get into the pod. What up, what up? Tin Roof, one of the best spots in South Florida. Of course, they got Happy Dad. One shot to Kilo? I'll do a shot to Kilo. Let's go! Really? That's how we full start this. Podcast. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do full send the honors, you know? Yeah. yeah. Have you guys met or no? Bro, I'm, Here, push I met that him in 2017. Him, Where'd you guys meet? My gym. GNC? No, nah, uh-huh. I came by the gym. I remember I took a picture of you, like, standing. You, did a, you hit a side chest. Oh, yeah, in front of your little... Yeah. That was like one day post-Olympia, too, so... Yeah. At my peak, yeah. Yeah, you crush, man. So yeah, so much it, has changed since I saw then. you guys, like, kind of grilling each other, like, when you both walked in. Is no. there any, like, gym bro, like... No. That's, that's a little salty, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no. Salty or what? <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm Tell not salty. No, I asked him to come, like, a thousand times. You asked me when I was in prep and stuff, so... Okay, that's fair. fair. You gotta Wait, ask how me long right ago after. was that? How long ago did he ask you? Oh, a long time. Last year? Yeah. Seabum, thanks for responding to my DM. Got you. Real gym bro yeah. shit. Got you. you knew, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Did you say, like, was that like a gym bro connection there? Yeah. Okay. That's what we're lacking, you know? Yeah, he wasn't no, responding we to have you. that, dude. What do you mean we're lacking? I don't know. I feel it with him a little bit more. You feel so, the connection with him on the gym? Eyes. <laughs> this guy can't go to the gym like more than fucking once a Why week. with you today? Yeah, once a week. Yeah, that's true. I Come be on, better. man. All right, you want to bring it in? Yeah, no, I thought we were, I thought oh, we were already rolling? going. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, we've been rolling. Dude, yeah, we, we got uh, we got Seabum, Chris, four-time Mr. Olympia champion, also a fellow Canadian, right? Fellow Canadian, indeed. Just yeah. told me he's from Ottawa, so it's pretty crazy too. Yeah, good old. You see how he always rips on Canadians too. So well, I don't know. My, after we might have to like am toss, I an him, at least? toss yeah, him up dude. against the wall right, or something. Just, it's like a joke, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, it, sure. now it's a joke. Right? We're de- yeah, <laughs> I love Canadians, bro. Yeah, all, all, of, a sudden, all of a sudden it's a joke. <laughs> You're stupid. Uh, so what's good? What have you been up to? Not a whole lot, man. Living the Florida dream right now. You know, it's nice living down here, but it's an honor to be on the podcast. I remember watching you guys back in the day because you guys were fellow Canadians killing it. You were still in Toronto, I think, when you first started doing yeah, all the yeah. prank stuff. And yeah. stuff. So it's cool to see how like far you guys have come and grown into so many like like a real business like brand, you know? For sure. It's wild. When did you move down here? Uh, like a year and a half ago. Okay. Oh, that's that like Pretty recent? Pretty soon, yeah. It was and- kind of middle of COVID, you know, all the shit going on with covid damn and until then you were still in canada yeah oh shit i thought you moved down here like all right we're gonna do a shot i guess did you move out of did you move out of canada because of the whole the whole like canadian response to the that wasn't the the whole reason it was mainly business okay stuff but like it was yeah it was like three years that we were fully shut down like gyms were closed it was bad yeah what were you doing that time what was that experience working out in a basement i was prepping for one of my olympias working on some guy's basement was like cable rack machine and stuff like in some dumbbells it was wild wait that's actually a crazy story yeah so what yeah, yeah tell us Thank about you. that like covid hits and then sure i'll take one of these all right let's do these first why do you have two that's you just my little up because you're the biggest guy no that's my little lime holder because oh, okay. fuck bro brad we might need to switch in a minute man. My, this is my, a full my, shot. My fucking, my yeah. fucking, don't cut to the wide shot, bro, please. My quads compared to C-bums, bro. Jesus I, Christ. I, I, I Do we have track pants, pants, bro? pants, bro? Oh, fuck. This is hilarious. Oh, this is bad, bro. This is hilarious. This is bad. All right. I might need two shots. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers, guys. So what was that like training <laughs> for an Olympia in like a basement? With, what kind of equipment was it? Just pulleys and? It was literally like a cable rack. Uh, Smith machine that was gonna fall apart, and then some dumbbells. And I was my brother-in-law. He yeah. was like, makes me look like a skinny little bitch. And he would squat like 500 pounds on this rackety little Smith machine. Yeah. 
and he had, he prepped for a full show back there. I just did half my prep leading into Olympia, and then we got into like a a gym that let us in the back door kind of thing. Yeah, but it was pretty brutal for a while. And, yeah, and that was during a prep that you like had that set up. Yeah, yeah. This was because gyms were closed on. in Canada, right? Everything was closed. Yeah, Bro, Canada was crazy. <laughs> <now>. Even <laughs> when gyms opened up, you had to wear a mask you in still the took gym. The dub that year. Hey, you still took the win that year. I did. Yeah. So Come no on. fucking excuses, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy what year shit. was that? 2020? 2020, yeah. And you'd won the year before, right? Yeah. What was that? Was 2019 the first year you win? 2019 was the first year I won. And then 2020 was actually like one of my best years I've ever done. So maybe COVID was the secret. Did you have an opinion on that? Like them closing down the gyms? I know Brad went through a tough time with that. and Yeah, but kept my shit open. Did you like, did that affect you mentally at all or? Mentally, I was pretty good. I have a really good support system back there, but I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't in agreement with it. You know, it yeah. was pretty ridiculous. They were just, and it was so long and clearly like all of America opened up and we stayed shut down for like yeah. another like year and a half and it just didn't make sense. So I know every time I went back there for like Christmas or some shit, it was like, it was next level. Yeah. You said to be there to like feel it. It's like a different feeling. Like people are like looking at you and shit if you get too close to them. Have you gone back now crazy. and you notice people are still a little different? Yeah. People it's, are colder and still like a little like, more reserved. Like, yeah. Like yeah. I said once in front of someone like, oh, well, like, thank God it's over now. And they're like, well, it's not over yet. Like <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's still back. like 300, like whatever. I'm like, oh my God, bro. Here we go. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. So you win the first year, well, 2019. <clears throat> yep. What does that change for your career after you win that? Shoot everything. So. Uh, yeah, literally everything. Okay, but I some think, of us aren't as educated. My bad. Sorry, I'm a little more. I'm a little more in this. Take this one. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it was. I was. I was always someone who took one goal at a time. So I never thought I was going to win the Olympia, or I even wanted to really win the Olympia when I started competing. So when I first came second, I was like, "Fuck!" Like this is like something that I could do for probably make a career out of. I dropped out of school, put everything into it. So coming into 2019 and actually winning it and having all that like work and sacrifice come into place was like a really cool moment. But I had dealt with some like, um, like I have an autoimmune disease. I got really sick the year before from it. So I was living in a lot of fear and like prepping for an Olympia, trying to be like confident. And it takes a lot of like confidence to believe in yourself getting through it. But I kept doubting on the back of my mind. I was going to get sick again and I was hurting myself. So it was this conflict in my mind I was going through. And then after I won the first one, it was amaz amazing, obviously beautiful moments I've been working for a long time, but it was like a sense of relief when I was done because it was so much stress I was holding. And I was like, fuck, like, why am I doing something that I like love so much and letting it cause so much stress into my life? So I had to really like, honestly take a step back that next year and like kind of reprogram my mind into like relinquishing that fear and not like constantly worrying about whether I'm going to be sick or not and like letting go of control because autoimmune diseases are so like what they can the be disease? random. What is that? Yeah. It's called IG nephropathy. So it's when your immune system kind of like attacks itself and it's just like a pre-genetic disposition you have or not and it can just like flare up sometimes. Obviously there's ways to mitigate as best as possible by re being really healthy and keeping stress levels down but obviously prep is like high stress. Yeah. So it's something that obviously caused more stress in my mind and stressing about it made me like a loop of shit. So 2020 was a year I really had to like dive deep into myself and be like, all right, like if you're going to keep competing, you got to stop competing or do it without this fear and like understand that you have no control over it. So you have to just kind of let it go to the universe. What happens will happen. Deal with it when it does. Damn, that's pretty tough. Do you, do you get your blood work done pretty often then? Cause it, it yeah. really, yeah. I actually just did this morning too. Yeah. How often? <laughs> probably every quarter on yeah. average in during prep. I did it like every month for a while. At one point, and you know, yeah. sometimes my markers aren't always great, but I know where they need to be for right. my my baseline. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. You kind of talked about like actually like going all the way in and being like, man, I'm, I'm gonna do this competing thing for real. Did I'm really curious? Did social media affect? Because I remember seeing you years ago mm -hmm. before you came to my gym and before you really started blowing up. And I would always see these shots of you set up these low angles and like your your legs were always insane. Yeah. You, you know you, that shit. I don't know you were like an apartment somewhere, but I was <clears> in my <throat> sister's house. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember those. I remember seeing you being like, this kid's got crazy shape. I wonder if he really looks like that. Yeah. Before you ever got on stage, way before. And obviously you came by, I met you, but I'm curious, did social media have an effect on like you being like, okay, I'm going to really do this? Or was like bodybuilding the thing that you were like, before you even got on the internet, you were like, I'm going to do this. You know what I'm saying? It definitely wasn't social media. And on, it's, it's hard to explain because it wasn't even that much of a love for competing. It was just like, the competitive nature in me finding something that felt like it was like meant for me and being able to put so much effort into it yeah. and starting to see progress and just like the reward I got from that effort and like 
the just the goal that I had, something to pursue and a meaning, a purpose of my life, just really drove me to put everything into it. Yeah. And social media was never a goal of mine. Like yeah. I literally posted those were just like check ins. I threw them up because I had videos, and I never thought it would take me anywhere on social media. When did you start to pop off on social media? Because your socials are huge, right? Yeah. Like your Instagram it, and like huge started to grow when I won my first Olympia, but it like popped off huge after that second one in 2020. Because yeah. the look, the way I looked in 2019 to 2020 was like. It looked like it was three years difference in between because I had like really got my shit together. So at that point, people were like, fuck, this guy's dominating. He's probably going to win for years. And it just kind of like blew up. And then I started investing a lot more in my social media. My boy Calvin here, I got him to like my YouTube full time and everything. And we really documented like there's all, there was always influencers and then there were bodybuilders and few people competed at a high level and actually documented it. It's pretty stressful too, like yeah. to do both. To, to do both. One's oh, hard yeah. enough. Even just the yeah. influencer shit's hard enough. Like so peak you're doing week before both. the Olympia, he's living with me. We're I mean, filming every single day. If you so think about tough. it, that's actually pretty sick because you're watching, you're telling your story on Instagram of compete or starting to like get in shape to competing in Mr. Olympia. Yeah. So everyone's really locked in. Literally, yeah. I give him like a complete behind the scenes look of what it takes, like showing him all the ups and the downs, and I think that's why people kind of connect and my social like did well because it was really like I tried to just be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, I just showed when I felt like shit, I would like have moments where I broke down and was scared and shit. And I like spoke about it and shared it. And people were like, fuck, he's human, you know? Yeah. So I think people were able to just relate to that. Yeah. I think it's important. Something you said, though, like as far as your reasoning for doing it wasn't necessarily social. Because yeah. I think a lot of kids nowadays, and I want you to speak to this a little bit. They like get into this industry because they see, oh, you could have success and you can make money and you can not necessarily compete. I'm talking mm -hmm. about like social and fitness. Yeah. But I notice a lot of people who have like really high level of success actually in this industry. It's because like they just really wanted to like do it. Not so much social. They were just like really into like the health, the fitness, the actual bodybuilding, like that side of mm -hmm. things. And then it came along with it. Like the social can't, comes along with it. For sure. And I just think there's a lot of kids who do it because it's just like, I, I swear, I just think people go to the gym now to like film their stuff and not yeah. really train. Mm -hmm. Like, have you noticed that's a, that's been a shift? Cause like, I'm assuming when you started this, how old are you? 28. Yeah, when you started, it was like that wasn't a thing that was relevant or people were even doing. And you just had to love it because you did it just for yourself. Yeah. And a lot of people now do it, like I said, just because it's for a camera. For sure. It's a so, long question. And I think that affects like, <laughs> what's that? So that was a long question. No, I, don't, I want his opinion on that. Because like a lot of kids do it just because they're like, oh, I want to get, I want to be popular. Yeah. You know? I, I, I have definitely noticed that shift a lot. And even in like the sponsorship world that we're in, like it's typically supplement sponsors and shit. Before you had yeah. to be a pro and then maybe you'd get a sponsorship. Yeah. Now most of the pros get shit sponsorships and just random people on social media get the big ones because it's marketing, you know? Right. But I definitely notice a lot of people now get into the wrong reasons and usually those people don't last. They burn out. Yeah. They typically don't compete at a high level because it takes a lot more effort and discipline to put in that. And if you're not doing it for the right reasons, it's hard to yeah. kind of work that hard for it. But I mean, it's our just kind of our society. And I think, yeah. like I touched, I dropped out of college to do this, but I didn't, I never had the intention to do that. And I didn't do it to be lazy. I think people start things to try and find an easy way to get success, an easy way to get money yeah. because they're lazy. And everyone always asks me like, should I drop out of college to compete? I'm like, fuck no. Like you, you asking me, that means you're probably lazy. Like you should know that answer by yourself and I understand whatever path you take is going to be hard as fuck. But like, it's got to be the right path for you, you know? How did you make that decision to drop out of college? Walk us through that. <laughs> I mean, it, it took a minute. My mom's still not happy with it, I don't think. No she's way. Still not? No <laughs> way. To this day, she'll still tell me, you know, you can go back to college and no. it's only two years left of school. I'm like, <laughs> no, all right. Maybe one day. But Where were you going? Not. Um, I was in Dalhousie, Halifax. Oh, That's shit. Funny. How yeah. was that? It was a great time. I'm sure you guys have been I've out been there. I've been out there. It's yeah, fun. It's, it's a good time. But, um... No, I mean, I would, like I said, I was competing almost as a hobby. And I was putting a lot of effort into it, obviously. But I was still like, all right, I need to get a career. I need to graduate school. And I need to, like, have a future for myself. And then I think in 2019, that was the year I – no, sorry, 2018. The first year I came second, I was, like, went from amateur winning a pro show to coming second at the Olympia all in a year. And I was like, okay, like, clearly I've proven to myself I'm willing to put in the work and discipline to this and there's a future for me and I started to get sponsors opportunities to travel and school would be waiting for me but I couldn't balance both at this point so I just decided I've made it this far juggling both time to drop one put everything in the bodybuilding and see where it takes me and you said you had sponsors like how much were you like kind of making at that time while you were in college <laughs> it's funny and I always say this because like probably the richest I've ever felt in my life was my first sponsorship I ever got and I was getting paid twenty two hundred dollars a month that's like lit when you get it. Oh right? my god! Yeah, we, you're like I'm well, getting this money for doing yeah, what I love. Yeah, you're 20. I remember going to the to the club and buying one of my friends' drinks, thinking I was yeah. a baller because I had two grand in my Who pocket. Who was your first you know? sponsor that picked you up? 
I have a supplement uh, company called MHP. Nice. Yeah. What do you get if you win Mr. Olympia? Um, I got 50, 50 G's last year. Seems kind of light. Not yeah. gonna lie. <laughs> you don't make money off competing, that's for sure. You but it just opens to, more doors, right? It, if you if you utilize it properly, it can open more doors. And if you build your own brand, you kind of have to do the work on the outside and like either build your own brand, sponsorships, or build your own companies. So yeah. it's competing open Mr. Olympia gets like 400 grand if mm. you win. But I mean, that's a lot, but that's one guy in the whole everyone who bodybuilds you know let's let's talk about that a little bit do you think that because i mean i mean even arnold's talked about this like a lot of people are also saying this and it's to no disrespect to open bodybuilding because what it takes to get to that level is so insane mm-hmm. but do you think over the next like five years it's going to shift where classic is just bodybuilding because it seems like they're going in that direction it's hard to say if it'll ever like replace it. I think, but but uh, maybe not just maybe not just replace because it probably still have it. I don't mm-hmm. know though because it seems like it's going away. But the money, I think the money's going to go to classic. It's really hard to say because right now it's like so like like old school, you know. Like no one like let's say like you talking about the running, ownership. Yeah, the ownership okay. is very like old school, and every, and the the hardcore fans of bodybuilding are like bodybuilding fans. The people who show up and buy tickets are different than the average people on social media. Most people on social media aren't going to the Olympia and buying tickets. So I think they kind of still have a struggle with all that. But I do think going forward that they'll definitely even out at some point. I don't know if they'll maybe even start judging bodybuilding to start bringing them down in size and stop rewarding yeah. the bigger guys, you know, like well, balance it out somehow. But you're kind of like the you're like you compete and then you're kind of like a gym bro influencer, right? Like you're not a real like gym bro, like compete. I don't know. I don't compete. <laughs> There's two different lanes, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He came yeah. here trying to like chirp me because <laughs> he's just, just that, thinking. That's no, I'm just, spin. I'm just trying to process say? and relate. Wow. Yeah. No, because we were on the car ride over here and you're like, bro, I'm going to go at you so hard. <laughs> I didn't just say <laughs> okay, that dude, once. Whatever, man. I didn't say that. That wasn't it. I was he just making sure. He competes in classic physique, dude. Is yeah. that what you wanted to know? No, I'm just, I'm just trying to follow along. Okay. All right. You okay, following here? Sorry, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, but how does, how do you know when people are, like it seems like there's a lot more people that are trying to be like the gym bro influencers rather than like the real competitor gym bros. What's the question? How like, you- like it seems like everyone's just lifting now to be like a gym bro influencer. Yeah. Like they don't really care about the competing stuff. Mm-hmm. Is that, would you say that's true? I mean, more people definitely train to train and not compete. And I don't think there's necessarily something wrong with that. I think seeking fame isn't necessarily the best avenue of life, but I mean, I think we'd see a lot of shift in our culture lately of a lot of people who kind of like, who love the gym go after it. and i think that's a more positive thing to put their energy into than a lot of other shit they could be doing you know Wait, which yeah. one are you going for uh i don't think i can compete maybe we should get Stanny on stage you in 2024 stage, i'll do it one time maybe you should did you ever get on stage i think about it sometimes hey, you've never done it i've done it back in the day i did men's physique when it first came out 2011 maybe this should be a bet you two have to go against each other at yeah. a show Against him? They got to create what? a barrel you... section for Mr. Come on, <laughs> Mr. Olympia. <laughs> no, I don't want to compete against you. Compete against him? Dude. Okay, Different whatever, head classes, but you know. Yeah. What's what's the hardest part about like prepping? Oh, oh it's man. a cliche question probably, but. I mean, like realistically the diet, you know, sticking to a diet for so long and like being so hungry and training hard over an extended period of time, being that restricted is hard, but it's something that. I've kind of shifted my mind on more so of like, uh, instead of I have to do this, I get to do this kind of thing. Like it's an opportunity where I'm grateful for all it gives me and it's a fun ride and the progress I see is like set is like fulfilling. So it's not horrible, but I think recently the hardest thing I've always have to deal with now is like when I was winning as like an, or coming up as an underdog and wanting to win, there was no pressure on you. It's like, hopefully Chris does better this year, you know, this, that, and then you win one and it's like, Oh, is he going to win next year? Is like, does he deserve to win? Like, is he going to prove it? And then you win again and again and again. And like, okay, now there's this, like this vision that people have of you. They look at you differently than who just like Chris Bum said, now you're like four time Mr. Olympia and it's this extra pressure and not like letting yourself, not letting that get into your mind and still training the same way you did before you not ever let it won. Slow you down. And having that, just yeah. like not letting that seep, seep into your mind mentally is just tough. And I think you see a lot of people like get to the top of a sport or some kind of category and win something and then just fall off. Yeah. It's yeah. really hard to stay at the top and maintain because you start doing it for the wrong reasons. You start doing it because of other people in your mind and shit rather than doing what got you there. You know? That's crazy. A lot bro. of influencers yeah. and famous people do this shit too. It's like, I'm here now, so I need to be different now that I'm famous. It's like, well, what got you there? Just yeah. being yourself, you know? So like, why change that, you know? Damn, yeah. how do you deal with that? Like, do you see like a lot, is it like Instagram comments that like people are saying that shit? Like, I mean, I think the biggest thing that I'm super grateful for that is 
either luck or whatever I got to me is my circle. Like the people around me, like my good friends, Matt, Calvin, my family, my sister, brother-in-law, parents, they've all like been with me from the beginning to the end, never treated me differently and probably slapped me if I started acting different. So I just have really good people around me and you know, you are who you surround yourself with. For and sure. I've always just had this mindset kind of from my parents that like no one can kind of add to your like character or take away from it. So if people are giving me positive shit on the internet, it's beautiful. I'm grateful, but it does, they don't know who I am. It's not making me a better person. So when the positivity comes, I don't really let that get to me. And when negativity comes, I try not to as well. So I just kind of let it all be like fluid information that's out there. And then I only really care about the opinion of people close to me who know me. That's and a good what's, point. What's I heard negative shade balance. that you could get though. Yeah. What's any negative shade that people would like throw at you? People will find some shit always. Bro, really? there's always something. The fucking internet. <laughs> I heard that. I know, but I feel like everyone loves out. you, bro. I feel like you're like the face of the gym bros right now. I mean, I get, I'm for sure I have a lot of love and respect. And I think partly because I've also been able to make fun of myself with shit. But every now and then there's some shit, but yeah. what, never anything too bad. How long do you plan to do this for? Compete. Not not internet shit. Compete. Mm -hmm. It's a great question because I really don't know. Yeah. And it's part of the thing when I was talking about my health and I had to kind of like let go of the control of being like, I need to be healthy or I want this many or that. Because the fact is I don't know. I want one more at least. Yeah. And then after that, if I'm healthy and I'm enjoying it, I will probably want one more. But all I can really focus on, because I don't know that far in the future. It's just the one. Is this one more. Yeah, you know? I get it. And thinking too far ahead of like, okay, I want eight. That's like a big goal to start overcome versus yeah. being like, I just got to do this one more time. And I just keep my focus on what I got to do right now. And then I keep moving forward with that. And then after that, I'll make another decision if I want to do it yeah. again. What's it look like when, when the competition's coming up? Like, do you lock in like super strict for three months before? Like, do you treat it like, like I look at it as like a fight. Like two guys are about to box like three months before you really have to lock in or mm. you just always. Yeah, like Dino now. He's fucking. Dino? He looks crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's probably very similar to that. Yeah, it's, we call it prep in bodybuilding and you start at however many weeks out. I usually do 16 weeks. So like four months or whatever that what is. What do you change during that 16 weeks? I mean, so I eat pretty clean all year, but it's like, you know, if at night I want a burrito. With like chicken and rice in it versus just a meal of chicken and rice or whatever or i want to go out and eat something with my girl or do something i'm more relaxed with it but when prep comes it's like i'm on a f meal plan eating the same thing every day and it doesn't change just slowly take food out i'm doing cardio consistently the same amount of times every week just variables are very consistent so i know Fuck. whatever i change it results in change in my body how, how are you so disciplined yeah like what seriously because me <laughs> Like, I feel like I work out a lot, but for me, it's just the diet. Like, I just get mentally weak. Bro, he's like, fucking Mr. Olympia. No, but I know, but <laughs> what yeah. The but, fuck, no, that's a good whatever. Point, but I'm saying, what's the why? Is, but what's is, the is mental, like, like, what's the, because it's all mental. Like, I know. How do you stay? It's tough. I don't know. If there's anything you can say, like, what's, is there any secret to like that mental discipline or any tricks or like, <laughs> I mean, I love a huge thing what I said is, I love it. Like you were munching the wagyu dumplings at Gecko yeah, last night. Yeah, you were, bro. Don't, don't act like wagyu dumplings you were. Fire, though. So you no, but he cheats all the slow. time, Loki. So I'm not trying to call you, but you do cheat sometimes. I cheat. I do. I'm not. You eat like I'm shit. Not like yesterday, Olympia, Olympia, bro. Yes, that's, that's like yesterday, we're on the plane. The, the fuck? fucking Italian what? comes out. Pasta. Yeah, chicken parm. Did you say pasta? Yeah. Pasta. Oh wow! I saw all Canadians say pasta. Pat. No, I say pasta. Pasta. You say pasta. I say pasta, and everyone gets mad at me for saying that. Oh, Jimmy says it like that. Pasta. Yeah. Really? I've noticed I feel that, like yeah. you said it like that before. Maybe. I probably mixed it up. Maybe yeah. converted. Maybe. Not fully, not fully. Jeez, but I spent too much time. <laughs> what about what about the yeah. night when you after you win? Do you like go party or have a huge cheat meal? I've honestly never partied after a show. Really? Usually my family's all in town and we come back and I usually honestly like drink some water and eat something clean, hang out with my like close eight group of people eight group of friends that are there and family, and then go to bed and chill. Because you normally don't feel so hot, you know? Mm -hmm. You're so dehydrated, starve yourself for so long. Honestly, I just want to like be around my close family, celebrate like that, and then kind of rest and relax. Brad, I feel like if you were disciplined, this could have been you, man. <laughs> dude, uh, if you were a little more disciplined, on, you could dude. be sitting right here, bro. Dude, I'm, I'm not here. What the, I'm here for different reasons, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I told you, he's, the, his plan coming here is like, I'm going to trip you the whole he's time. He's just thinking how he can Yeah, you man. You're well, fucking no, ass. I'm here just for like to compare, bro, because you're sure. both like fucking big Yo, dudes. Be before you really got into this like bodybuilding training, like, <laughs> did you ever like party? Did you ever go crazy? Oh, like, yeah. I, did, I partied a lot, yeah. And, and then Dal, then, Dal, yeah, Dal's a party school. And then you were just like, what, what was the switch where you were like, yo, I'm going to do this shit? That's the. It was it was that year when I said I decided to pull out of school and be like, all right, I'm diving in. Because when I was going to school, it was actually pretty funny. In Canada, all the shows are at the end of summer. So I would go to school, pretty much just party all year, like three times a week. 
and then try and work out where I could. And when you're young, you can go to the gym hungover and hit PRs. Like, it doesn't affect you. Yeah. So I would do that. And then when summer would come, I wouldn't drink for four months, and I would just prep for a show. And that was when I was amateur. So I was competing as an amateur, kind of climbing the ranks like that. And then I doing that system, I made it to be a – I got my pro card. <laughs> yeah. And then when I got my pro card, I was like, all right, I'm going to pull back and partying a little bit, maybe go out once a week instead of three times and, like, focus more on, like, my off season actually. And then that year I won a pro show. And I was like, okay, fuck, like, let's actually dive in and see where I can take this if I have a full year every year of complete consistency. Did you start to lose friends when you were like, I'm going to take this serious? <sighs> I wouldn't say I lost friends. Definitely started to disconnect a little bit because, like, you just can't relate yeah, yeah. quite as much. You know, my fr- I, I remember, like, constantly being in my room – our house was always like the pre-drink house because we were in like a six-story mm. big house with like yeah. our dinner table with a beer pong table, like all this f- typical bullshit. Fuck yeah. So they'd all be down there pre-drinking <laughs> and I'd be just like chilling, waiting for them to leave, to eat a meal and go to bed. Damn. They'd show up at 4 a.m., wake me up, and then I'd be up at like 8 a.m. They'd be waking up at 12. And it just like we started to drift apart a bit. But I mean, we're still friends this day, but a lot of them still live that lifestyle and I just stopped. So we yeah. obviously trailed apart a little bit but you're jacked and they're fat probably <laughs> <laughs> some of them are actually in pretty crazy shape somehow i, I don't even know he's how. jacked and they're fat probably yeah, yeah what's it what's it like uh or how important is it to have like your woman in your life when you compete like is she really is she really helpful like how is that dynamic it, huge like yeah yeah absolutely huge yeah and i it's slowly built more and more over the years and the thing i was talking about, about the difficult part of the mindset and the pressure and shit she's someone who definitely like always keeps me grounded yeah you because no that. matter she was with we met in 2018 before i ever won yeah and she'd been with me for every show i've ever won so she's seen the progression and she like so she can be like she's like my base my rock of like all right like this is where we, we've been together since the beginning like bring it back down this is all that matters right here you know like this is just normal life just yeah. go to the gym do your thing it's beautiful Bro, i feel like she you, helps a lot i feel like you have to have a girl to do you, this. Way too distracting. you can't be chasing pussy during oh, crap, yeah. bro. No, Can you, you imagine? Girl, lots of bodybuilders, <laughs> especially back in the day, they used to travel a lot more for sure. During shows. prep, though? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, man. And like going out to the bar? Oh, because like, <laughs> that's when they're like, they're like, you know. Bodybuilders used to do like just LSD tequila? and like a Molly and shit because, you know, zero calorie. You actually probably burn a shit ton of calories. Really? And they used to party hard back in the what, day. What, Molly yeah. at the bar to burn extra calories? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Have you, have you ever done any, do that. Have you ever done any recreational drugs? When I was younger, yeah. Which ones? Oh, he's, he's trying to get you to say shrooms so he can do it one on one, me. 15 minute. Bro, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Don't say mushrooms. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what you're trying to get. No, I'm just curious. What about, do you like journal or do any of that? <laughs> Yo, yeah, just, don't get on this shit, bro. What? Don't get on this shit. I don't know. Okay, do now go ahead. Do you have like a, like something where you just want to like have affirmations or lock in and <laughs> escape reality? I don't really have like short term, long term goals or shit I set up like that, but I definitely, I journal to like an extent. I do like when I listen to a lot of podcasts and audiobooks, I have a long drive or when I'm doing cardio or whatever. And when there's like a concept that hits my mind and being like, and it's usually all mindset shit, like, you know, high up like athletic trainers or therapists who go over like performance and shit. And then if I hit, hear something that hits me, I kind of like write it down and I try and like write something where like I'm what I'm feeling in it and understanding it. And I think over the years, that's definitely helped me develop my mindset to kind of like keep a sane mind. Oh, so you're trying to fucking troll no, me. You guys Look are kind of similar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good shit. That's what, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, he's a big yeah. journaler. He was trying to troll Only me. Only when he's wearing glasses, but yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, I should have yeah. brought, brought the glasses on. I should have brought the glasses, man. I, just, I fucked up. That's what, what I'm missing. I need what, what do you think's been your biggest obstacle to win? Or like, have you ever had like a, like when, have you ever wanted to quit? Just be like, yo, I'm over this shit. Sounds like the, the autoimmune disease, probably. The what? Your, your the their issue is probably the reason why your biggest obstacle. Yeah, my health, definitely. Yeah. I have many times been in the middle of prep and felt shitty or like scared or something, and I'm like, why the fuck am I doing this to my body? Like, is it going to be worth it if I'm hurting myself? And I kind of like build like a bit of a shame, like victim type mentality of like, why me and all this shit. But again, it's just constantly bringing myself to the fact of like doing all the health checkups I can to make sure I'm as conscious and aware of what's going on in my body. So I'm not like worrying and creating fear and then understanding that no matter what, we can get sick. So if I'm going to choose to do this, I'm going to choose to enjoy it and be here. But it's definitely every year is a battle. I'm not like perfect with that. I, and I think one of the big things where I've said before where I, people like heard it and like hit home like listening when I won the last. 2021 20, olympia or something i like straight up i don't know why but i won the olympia and i felt like i had to share this on like the, my speech afterwards mm-hmm. i was like six weeks out i was crying on the bathroom floor with my fiance literally like wanting to quit being like why the fuck am i doing this like i can't do this anymore i'm done you know and she well, my fiance gave me a huge pep talk like tim well, grovered my ass and got me in shape and 
fact is everyone has those days when you're trying really hard and putting a lot of effort in something that eventually you're just going to feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. and it's fucking normal yeah. you know everyone's going to want to quit at some points the whole point is that you don't though you know it's whether you break in those moments or not exactly, right yeah. what what was yeah. that what was that moment though in the bathroom what was the thing that was holding you back like what was the what was the issue that you were like i'm gonna quit a bit of the, a bit of the pressure of like the thing i feel like i have to do this people i have to win taking when soon do you have that it's this concept of like a lot of people have this idea where if you want to be a champion because a lot of people speak like this you like can't be okay with losing you know don't even think about losing losing is the devil like fuck it and i've had to understand like one of the most important parts of winning is being okay with losing because it takes you out of that state of reaction. When you're in fear of something, you're in a state of reaction of like yeah. not wanting it to happen. It fucks everything up. And then it just, it just, you just don't feel good. You're like avoiding something. You're living in lack rather than like abundance. You're avoiding instead of searching for something. It's just completely different feeling inside of you. Yeah. And I was in that feeling of avoidance of not wanting to get sick, not wanting to lose all that pressure, not being more like grateful of this opportunity I have of chasing something that I love. Damn, I feel that. And just like battling that at one point. And my fiance just like, whatever she fucking put in my head. I can't remember. I wish I knew exactly what she said, but she like was reiterating shit that I've said and spoken to her about and just put it in me at the moment I needed it. And I was like, fuck, like, yeah, you're right. It's like, stop being a little bitch right now. Get your shit together and yeah. like, get back to work. I saw you, did you tear your bicep also before your last win? Yeah, like three days before the Olympia last Whoa. year. Holy shit. Yeah. Ha walk us through that or like what happened there? The worst thing is, and everyone kept asking me, I have no idea how it even happened. It Like my arm hurt on like the Wednesday before, Thursday it hurt more, Friday it was kind of swollen. And then Saturday morning, the morning of the show, you get up at like 5 a.m. and my arm was like red and swollen. And it wasn't horrible. It was a partial tear. Huh? It was a partial tear yeah. and it didn't look that bad. But when you're like training that hard for something and like chasing this unattainable perfection and then you have this blatant flaw like i couldn't get my mind off it i was just like worried and stressed about it and i honestly went back into that like why me like victim kind of mindset and i was just like fuck why does it have to happen today all this shit and then and again one of those moments where like life presents you with battles where you need to like learn to grow you either grow or die and my coach this time actually came up to me and i got off stage and I was in the center. I still looked really good. I was probably going to win. But I was like anxious and only thinking about my arm. I didn't have the like confidence of a champion up there. And he came up to me. He looked at me like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And I was like, like, I don't know. Like, what, what, are, you, what, are, you, what, what are you talking about? He's like, smile up there, man. Like, relax. Like, own it. You're the champion. Like, bring that confidence. Like, fuck your arm. What are you going to do about it? And it was just like woke me up. I was like, it's so right. This is one of those moments where like, what's in your control? What's not in your control? I can't heal my arm right now. I'm literally set me on stage in 30 seconds i can't fix it what can i do i can stand up there with confidence and if i pose properly and display my confidence people are going to see that more than my arm and that's going to help avoid it at some point and i'm also going to be able to enjoy it more because i've worked hard for this and i still deserve to enjoy this moment so it was a battle and even again in the night show got in my head he kind of got in my back in my head again but it was another one of those things where like like i said life presents you with things where you need to grow i had learned how to handled pretty well my health stuff over the length of prep but now it was this like immediate thing on the day of the show i now had to handle and it i mean now i'm grateful for it i got through it and you know it's a good story it was a battle i got through and now i feel like i've been through a lot of shit throughout my preps where i feel like i go into the next one i'm like what the fuck could happen worse now you know i've gotten sick in one been in the hospital i tore my hamstring in one tore my bicep in this one like what could happen next knock on wood <laughs> yeah, hopefully yeah. Not <laughs> but, you know, yeah i'll be ready for it when it comes <laughs> How, uh, for like some of the gym bros or some people that are watching that might not be in the gym, like how do they judge? How do they even judge? Yeah, I was wondering thing? that. How do they judge? Do like, yeah, how do yeah. they judge? And like when you say like, oh, I know I'm going to win. Like, is that just because you're like Wait. looking at the other guys and shit and you're like. I, did, I didn't like, I didn't really know I was going to win, but people kind of like were like, you got uh, this. But it's, I mean, it's a lot of different things. It's how lean you are, body fat percentage, symmetry like up to down, side to side, how big your legs are versus your upper body, how each arm is like comparative and like overall size, how small your waist is. And it's different per division, like open body from the huge guys. It's more so mass. And that's a lot of it. 
and then in my division classic physique it's more aesthetics so it's more of having a small waist with big lats and big legs kind of like that x-frame so the more like x-frame you have and it's kind of like you look at 90s bodybuilders versus now and that kind of you can just tell the aesthetics you know a little prettier look that's more important in mine and then who's leaner who's bigger and who's got how, the best how body competitive parts. is the competition with you it's i mean it's very competitive. like but like when you see the same guys and they're just like like is there any animosity between competitors oh like that yeah honestly no which which is wild i think in some divisions there but classic physique is like the most like brotherhood of a division people are really? so kind and nice like the one dude who came second last year ramon dino yeah he's talking about crazy athletes from brazil can't speak a lick Insane. of english but he's like the nicest guy ever he won the Olympia last year and he couldn't speak English. So he's just like, shit's crazy, my man, shit's crazy. Like <laughs> talking to Arnold. And he was just like, it was just a joy on his face. And he talks to me and he has a lot of respect for me. We've like worked out together and we couldn't speak, but it was like, you could just tell he like respected everything I was doing with watching what I was doing. And it was like really like conscious of it. So it's, I'm super lucky to be in a division where everyone's like kind, but sometimes the league tries to create animosity between us to create like a bit of a storyline, like UFC and kind of shit. Yeah. But like, None of us are like that'd that. be funny if there was like some shit talking. Right? There is a men's physique, yeah. So a division, yeah. Speaking of Arnold, okay, yeah. If you went say. back in the day, <laughs> I had to ask this question. You went back in the day. And you were competing against Arnold back in the day. Where would you stack up? Where do you think you'd stack up? It's a tough question because I think if I went back in the day, because you're a winner, on. bro, you're a winner. Hold on, you hold on. Me. No, you're a winner, dude. Come on, but but what's your body weight on, on stage, stage? On stage, forty. What was his body weight on stage? Like 240-ish. What was his height? 6'1". What's your height? 6'1". <laughs> oh, so who's <laughs> winning this shit? It's 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 really hard to say because back then people weren't as lean. If I went back looking at that, you would have been too look, lean. I'd be the leanest person they've ever seen. They wouldn't even know what the fuck's going on. So I don't know if they would even want that. So maybe he would win because of that. But if he were to come today and compete against me in last year at the Olympia, I think I would beat him because he's yeah. not in shape enough. You know, he wasn't. I see. Well, but like, it's like sports progress you know yeah. everything progresses whereas back in the day 90s nba players used to drink beer at halftime yeah now they're like having fucking ivs putting in them and like b shots and like all this shit just like perform at the highest level like times change you know yeah what's your and arnold's relationship like very is he like a mentor not really no i've talked to him like once kind of for like a short conversation but he's pretty like he's a busy man you know i, yeah. I really never see him or talk to him at all oh damn yeah. how do you feel about those comparisons like I mean, it's an compare. honor yeah. for sure. Like, he's yeah, an absolute goat, you know. And I don't think I would ever replace him as a goat in bodybuilding because some people talk about that. Because I don't think you can compare the impact he's had on the sport, you know. And when we talked about like the prize money and class of physique and shit, like, yeah. I don't want to be the guy complaining saying I deserve it. I want to be the guy performing on stage and off stage to bring it to the you, bring the you attention will. to I the class to make it worth it. You are already. You know? Like Arnold never bitched about prize money. He went out, he went to Hollywood, he did all this shit, and he made bodybuilding like mainstream for a while. Absolutely. Purely because of who he was. Yeah. You know? He made bodybuilding in the 90s, which is absolutely insane, you know? That's I mean, like what a that's greatness, you know? That's kind of like why we're here. I'm curious about that that question too now. I was like, are you uh like when you first started this, who were your the people that you were looking towards? Was it like the Arnold? Ronnie, like, what was that era that you were watching? You're like, oh, I really like this. And like, what got you really into it? I genuinely, I didn't get into bodybuilding because of bodybuilding. Okay. I just played sports and loved training. Okay. I just loved like, going into a gym and just, like pushing myself and trying to get strong. And I never, I didn't have like bodybuilding magazines or anything when I was young. When I started to get into it more, it was mainly because of my brother in law was a bodybuilder. And he was, in terms of bodybuilding world, he's the guy I looked up to. Because to this day, I've met her, as many pros as I've met. He's like the strongest, hardest training, most disciplined guy out of all of them. Yeah. And that was like my like standard, you know? My gym bro was like this fucking freak, strong motherfucker who I was always chasing after. And it made me push myself. But I never really looked up to a bodybuilder, really. So I got really, based on, because I know you've always, you haven't been like, you're not a weak bodybuilder. Right. I'm not saying all bodybuilders are weak. Obviously, yeah. there's a lot of strong ones. There's ones that are a lot stronger in the history of bodybuilding. But would you attribute like your success, your size, like your condition, like your body to the fact that you didn't just train like as seemingly as not just as a bodybuilder, like you've trained for strength. You seem like maybe not like your number one focus, mm -hmm. but it seems like you've always included trying to be strong in your programs. And yeah. it's obviously translated. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, that again, that's because of my brother in law. Yeah. Like when we started training, he was benching 500 pounds on incline bench press. Yeah. Like it was nothing. So I was always like, fuck, I got to push myself to be close to that. So that definitely helped a lot. And I think I would still get where I was going to go, but I think I got there quicker. 
And it's my advantage when I was young is I always had like muscle maturity. You talk about like that density. Yeah. I always had that way ahead of most people because I trained and pushed myself further and Strength. harder than a lot of people through like moving weight, you know? Yeah. So I think that really helped me get to like that muscle maturity stamp like point Faster. a lot quicker than most. And then I was able to build from there. So yeah. I think that's why like 24, I looked like a lot older, you know? Yeah. I saw something where it said that you played multiple sports, I think in high school maybe, right? Yeah. So like what's your athleticism like? outside of bodybuilding i was very athletic but i wasn't very gifted and like i had shit like i played hockey no stick handling no but hands. i was always the fast no brutal hands, hands. brutal oh, hands. coordination huh? i had bricks you know anything yeah. what, what else besides hockey football or uh, i played hockey when i was younger and i stopped because my hands were so bad i played football <laughs> basketball and track <laughs> track i was good at because i didn't need coordination really but i could jump really high like i was like 5 11 220 in high school and i could dunk in like grade 10 yeah he, he, i'll give you that Give me one. You, you don't. You don't too. get the Lakers oh, game. Jump. We've seen the I clip. Could jump easy, yeah. bro. Jumped yeah, out. but I could like run fast and jump. But I wasn't like like I played basketball and I was like an enforcer. Dude, was, like, why are you trying to compare guy. us? What do you mean? It's kind of crazy. Like, one in the same kind of, but he's fucking four time. My oh, fucking guy, oh, okay. Olympian C yeah, bum baby. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Fucking asshole. What about like uh, PRs? Let's talk PRs. <laughs> What's your PR on the press? Yeah, like, Let's talk. Well, PR. if you want to fucking compare, we'll compare. Dude, I gotta take. He's a probably piss. stronger than me, honestly. Brad's you pretty think so? fucking strong. I'm like, Why are you a hater, dude? I'm not a hater. I'm trying to understand the fucking lifestyle, dude, bro. I don't get it, man. He's See, classic Mr. Olympia. Fucking like, what do you mean? Well, I just want to know what PRs are. What's wrong with that? I don't know. What man. is your PR on the bench? On bench, bench is brutal. It's like four thirty-five, four hundred thirty-five. Okay. Bro, I'm not playing this game right now. I, I bench more than that. I mean, it's not. I'm not he, I've seen him lift like more than pretty I'm much not, all my lifts. I'm not playing this game. It's not about me and how, how much, much you I, bench, Brad. I, I bench more than that. Okay, that's it's fine. I'm not. We're not playing this game. I'm not here to do this. I'm just I'm, so you I'm know. I'm not going to be offended because they're on the internet. They're going to be like, I'm not a I'm, powerlifter. I'm not trying to disrespect the guy, dude. You're being an asshole. That's not being disrespectful. I'm, he's he's I'm trying to learn, purpose, bro. Man. What are you trying to learn? I just want to see like Mr. Olympian influencer gym, bro. Like, what what's the difference between lifting shit? Okay. How come you even opened a gym, or have you ever thought about that? I like privacy. Honestly, we're working on building a gym right now, and no one's allowed in it. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm I just love building that. a private gym for myself and my like friends and family, and I just like I want to be alone when I train. You know, when I you walk it. into a gym, you're like a oh, or like bro. lifting gym. Is it just crazy? Some it can be for sure. Like, like a gym, gym, a gym, gym. Yeah, because because I'm like very <coughs> niche of like in the training world. Like you guys probably can't go anywhere anymore. You probably can't even go to a grocery store, eh? Yeah, bars are like probably the worst bars place to go. Or like, yeah, bars yeah, anywhere, are gyms. Like 18 bars to 30 males. Yeah. 18 to 30 males. But Bar even, even gyms, honestly. You're right. Like, you're right. Yeah, yeah even for me. Like, the they're not kids. coming for my physique, but like, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. yeah. But exactly. And when I go to the gym, though, that's like my job, you know? Yeah. So it's like every time you're trying to film, someone's like exactly. fucking running and ruining. You're like, so I just really would like a gym where no one can fuck with even for me know? if i'm trying to work out i think that's the worst place to it's like brutal, yeah not that i won't take a photo but like after the workout like exactly. you're just trying to like let me let me get clear your this. mind workout and shit yeah, yeah. it's like the worst yeah. place bro yeah i don't know but, how you do that all dude, the, time. the classic is like i'm not trying to bug you but i'm gonna ask you yeah. anyways. every time i don't want to i don't want to interrupt your workout dude, but I, I always tell people i'm like just ask me because like it's yeah. it's so clean that i'm not trying to bug you just do it i don't care i'm here yeah. if i wasn't honestly because like you know, separating yourself is gonna is gonna help you like immensely with your with your clarity. But if I'm gonna go to a commercial gym, I expect someone to come up and probably say something to me. For sure. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it, otherwise I wouldn't be there. Yeah. You know, so I know what I'm walking into. Has has anyone ever interrupted you like mid set? <laughs> Either of you? Oh Warming yeah. Warming up, yeah. Oh yeah. Never like dying crazy. That's set, fucking Have you ever lost your temper? It's a real question. No, I've thrown some sarcastic comments and I felt bad. Like someone I was literally warming up a few weeks ago or a month ago and someone came up to me like, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm like, but that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I did that two oh, days ago. And I'm like, fuck, I'm sorry. I'm just I joking. Know. Like, Shattered you want a picture? And I took a picture. Then you but, step back you know, and they're like, yo, they've been watching for so right? long. Yeah, like, like, you don't know how to you, act in the moment when you meet do someone. Do you ever, because I troll people, I, I feel bad, I, but, I'm, but I'm always nice right after. But do you ever say, do, do they ever go, are you Chris Bumstead? And you go, no. Always. Okay. People come up to me like, are you Chris Bumstead? I'm said, I'm like, I get that all the time, man. Like, no, like I, people always say I look like him. <laughs> I do <laughs> that I shit like all walk, the time. I usually walk away and then they're like, I'm, like, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> fucking funny, dude. We do that all the time. You got to make fun with it. You know, if yeah, yeah. you got to find your own enjoyment. That's good. What, what was that meme that you like chirped, like calling someone like a skinny bitch or some shit? Oh, like, is it a single meme you mean? Or I just think like, so. I don't even know. Yeah. I don't know exactly. I always jokingly call myself a skinny bitch. And now like. 
I go place on it and they literally, before I even ask for a picture, they're like, can you hold my camera and call me a skinny bitch? Or can you call my mom yeah. a skinny bitch? You know, like random <laughs> shit. I'm like, not your I mom. Seen that. Wait, you called rude. somebody a skinny bitch one time? I call myself that usually. Oh, oh. And I don't know why it just popped off. You know, we made t-shirts saying don't oh, be a skinny dope. bitch. And they like, people is, love it. Like, Is sumo really cheating? Yeah. All right. Is what? Nice. You know it is. Yeah, it is. It is really what? is. I can't, we can't hear you. Sumo deadlifting. What is that? Like, oh, what is that? For like powerlifting though? Just or for yeah, that is. Just in general. In general. It's just so, so easy, dude. Oh. It's so easy. It's the big like controversy in the That's the like a community. wide stance? Yeah, you know, yeah, con- like you know conventional okay. versus like sumo. Ah. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's easier to lift? I think it's easier. Is it still good for gains though? Yeah. Oh, okay. Kind of. Okay. It depends what, yeah. Depends what your gains is just, just to lift more. What's like your biggest like pet peeve in the gym? Like if you see someone doing or like. That's a good question. I like that question. Yeah. Like, what's the don'ts in the gym? Like sumo. That's that's. I think. Just, like, if you see su- guy doing sumo, you're like, that guy's dust or what? I mean, I try not to judge too much. People ask <laughs> in your I'll head, though. Out. In your head. In my head, yeah. yeah. I don't put that out. <laughs> I think I what just because we went to the gym and it was so bad there is people training with their shirts off when they're sweaty as fuck, like just completely tarps off, like lying on a bench covered in sweat. It's just like, and people shouldn't have their shirts off. You just don't want to see that, you know. So shirts should stay on in the gym. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, what else? That's, Damn, what else? that's a big Whoa. statement. Yeah. You sure you are gonna back that? <laughs> I don't take my shirt off in the gym. There you go. Maybe yeah. if it was my own gym, but probably. What about not like texters there. in the gym? If they're on the machine, I want it's annoying. Yeah. But if they're somewhere on the corner, that's you. What the fuck? Like you, you're like a chest fly guy. Bro, when I'm Bro, in there, I'm hit working. like eight reps no, 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 and then no, no, sit no, on the no, bench. When I'm in there, I am no. working. Do you two work out together? Yeah, we worked out today. This guy does one set and he dips off. He's on the phone. Yeah. Dude, that's you, bro. You're fucking capping right now. What? Yeah, you were there. You were pretty lazy, bro. Oh my god, that's I'll crazy. I'll text him like here and there, like between like. He'll be on full on phone calls, sure. dude. Someone's full on phone calls. Yeah, man. Now you got to stop, dude. Talk about taking serious. I want you to take it serious. Come on. What's your biggest pet peeve in the gym? Oh, that like people do, or that yeah, like happens yeah, to me. That people do. <laughs> Damn. Honestly, I, I think it's just like it's the classic, like wasting the squat rack. Like if someone's doing something like really like menial in the squat rack, not squatting, but being in the squat rack is like just pretty fucking annoying. If I'm being honest, like if they're in there doing something silly, like I just want them to squat. You know, Fair that's right. it. Nothing crazy. You what like about you? Like, What's your biggest pet peeve in the gym? I don't know. I was trying to think. Why is that funny when you ask him? No, it's just different. Well, like a normal guy, you can't have an opinion. No, dude, I don't know why you're always attacking me. It's like kind of. When you train at a zoo, is it like do people are you people used to you there, or is it like even worse because they come to see you? Uh, there's regulars, but yeah, it is. It is like every day people are like, "Yo, can I come take a photo?" But but I think yeah, exactly because it's become a gym that a lot of people go to. But if I'm like training for the most part, and I'm like just kind of locked in, like people get it and they'll kind of wait. Yeah. Some some kids won't, but. I'll just I just do my best to be like yo as soon as I'm done, which some people don't like. Some people get mad, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, for sure. Um, All right, wait, what, I, I about, what about your what about your like getting pissed off playlist? I gotta get a fucking huge lift in. By getting pissed off playlist? Yeah, you definitely have a song. Oh, that yeah, number one song. Off, but I have a playlist called Big Boy Gym. Okay, That's what's my, on there? I want to be a big boy. What's on there? What's I'm included in that? Motley Crue, Black oh, Sabbath. Oh, let's fucking go! Some old so chip. all rock. Fuck it's mainly yeah. rock. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. My girl listens to hardcore rap, just pure gangster rap. And I'm more of like an old white How man. How long have you, know? you been with your girl? It'll be five years in September. She from she, Canada too? No, she's from Illinois. Okay. Is she a gym like gym girl? Yeah. She competed. She won the Olymp- like- she won the Olympia too in twenty sixteen. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So it's going like, you, you got a date you got a date in the gym. When you're you at that level. To. And I honestly didn't really want to, but she's very different than a typical gym girl. Like she's not like self-centered on her body or anything like that. She's like a very wholesome, like good Midwestern girl. So damn. I feel like hard gym to find girls, in the gym, dude. Gym girls are hard gym to girls find. Gym girls is a new one. wave, bro. I'm telling you right hard now. Hard to find ones that are just. Muscle mommies are the new thing. Yeah. That's, Have you heard why of do, Tell us about it. What? <laughs> girls I mean, just I'm like Jack girls. Them. Muscle Jack mommies? Girls. Jack girls are like stocks going they way like up. They put their phone on the ground and like take upward pictures of them like flexing and shit. It's like the new rave, apparently. Why do, don't all the fitness girls call you? What do they call you, Daddy or or what? No, all that's the, the that's the all guys. The guys call me that's Daddy. The guys. Oh, yeah. the guys. So yeah, what do they call you, God girl? But Daddy, yeah. I don't know why. Daddy all the guys, that's what I call them. Uh, not all of them, but a fair amount. I've had people literally come up to me and be like, "Daddy," and I'm like, "Please don't." Like, it's really uncomfortable. Have a grown man call you Daddy to your face. <laughs> oh, a comment is one thing you can ignore it, but yeah, that's. I we would called Gabe Daddy the other night when you were hammered, bro. 
That's different. I wouldn't say that to like a straight guy. <laughs> You're what? Fine. Like, that, does that make it better? I don't know if that makes it's it better. Control, bro. Whatever. Okay. No, I'm. Yeah. I'm buying that. All right. Let's move on from that. Oh, we're ready to go. Get all into that. You ready to go to the next one? It's not weird. Yeah, you're good. You it's don't not know this weird. Guy, I don't judge. I don't judge. Dude, honestly, I gotta piss so bad right now. Wait, yo, see, I'm gonna ask. Take a run. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll be right back. See, what's what's the ultimate goal then? So let's say you do win one more Mr. Olympian. Then what do you do? Like, do you just lift or take this seriously for the rest of your life? No. <laughs> I mean, I love what I'm doing right now, but it takes a toll on the body for sure. I want to win like another one or two Olympias at least, depending how I feel after that, take on the next part of my life. But like, not to sound like cheesy, but I think like the ultimate thing I'm looking forward to at the next stage of my life is being a father. Wow. I think I've like learned a lot of great like mental stuff through bodybuilding and not like hardcore like competitiveness but like actually like relieving pressure of the self and being able to like be your authentic self and all this shit. And I think I would have like I'm excited and hopeful and grateful for the opportunity to like teach a younger generation that, you know? What do you think it is about? Cause Brad actually has this too. Like gym bros, like you guys are very like just calm, relaxed and like very into like until they're pissed. But yeah. Yeah. Until you guys get pissed off and tape them off. But like starting a family, like, is that like a thing? Like, I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you just release all your pent up energy. If, if at the we gym. counted the amount of times Brad says he just wanted to be a father on this podcast. It'd be in the hundreds, bro. Really? Yeah. Like, I don't know what that is. I don't That's know a either. common trend or not. Maybe. I don't know. We're going to have to figure that one out. I've never heard other gym bros say that. It's what other question. businesses? Tell us about like your other businesses that you make money like outside, obviously the prize money. Yeah. So that's kind of like, that's the next goal, probably the next stage officially after um, bodybuilding. And that's, I, that's why I moved to the States. Raw Nutrition, my supplement company. Mm -hmm. I have two partners down here in Florida and our warehouse is down here. So we moved down here to kind of start that and pop that off. And I was kind of like... So that's supplements? Yeah, it's like sports supplements, protein, pre-workout, nice. all that kind of stuff. And that was our So thing. mad about the name. I'm so mad. Not <laughs> he stole our name. Bro, what? Oh, Why shit. Get wait, the fuck wait, out of here. What'd you say? He's jealous of the name, he said. Oh, I'm so mad like about that name. Is there like a trademark war going on right now? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just... Brad's yeah. kind about it. We're, we're not going to sue him yet. We're I'm waiting so for pressed it. about that name. <laughs> Who had the whole raw thing first? Yeah. I'm so pressed. Is that a thing or not? Yeah, no? that's interesting. No, I'm kidding. Because that's like the same category, like fitness. I feel like, like you're like, kind of trying to be like the raw guy of the States and you're trying to be the raw guy of Canada, which I get. Except now I've infiltrated down the States too. Oh, Stop, were you going to call your supplement line that? Yes. But you couldn't? I, I was waiting. <laughs> I'm so mad about Should've it. trademarked it. I'm so mad about it. God, I even told fucking whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I love it for you. You talked to Dom about it? Yes, or? I talked to Yeah, Of course. I love I love it for you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> what? Wrong shit? What well, it's just kind of coincidence. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't pick the name, so I can't blame me on that mm. one. What else do you have outside of Raw Nutrition? Uh, yeah, so we have Raw Nutrition. I have like a training app. We do some merch, just kind of like typical stuff. Mm -hmm. And we play a lot off kind of my name. And even in the supplements, we play off my list. Like our pre workout's called Thavage because I accidentally <laughs> said Thavage once because my list came out. And then we have like Isolate instead of Isolate. That's dope. That's so we're dope. just like playing off. Oh, like, oh, I used to get made fun of them for my list, especially when I started social. Like, they're not making fun of you anymore, right? Hey? They're not making fun of you anymore. They do sometimes, yeah. Really? What the one of the roasts I used to get that I sound like a deaf, mentally challenged person when I speak. Damn, and then when I was tough. when I was young, Holy I was, that guy's shit. Fucking I was dead, pretty huh? fucking fuck? quiet and introverted. And I still have like anxiety doing like public speaking now. And I think a lot of that honestly came from when I was young, getting bullied from my list. So like starting to put yourself on social media and getting roasted for how you sound. And everyone knows when you first hear yourself back in oh, a video, you're like cringing like, oh my God, I sound so fucking stupid. So I, have, I had to overcome that for a while. And then we just owned it, threw it on t-shirts, on pre-workouts and people loved it. I have a question. Um, Obviously the business stuff, I, I'm assuming you're getting more and more involved in that stuff as you like go through your career. Uh, what do you enjoy outside of business, outside of bodybuilding? Like what do you do? Or is, it, is your life just literally that? It's definitely been so much of that now. It's hard for me to like build like a hobby. Because hobbies still take a lot of time to of put course. into it. And gym started as my hobby. So I still kind of hate the like, that's still my outlet. You know, when I go to the gym, I can still feel yeah. peace and relax from it. But honestly, I travel a lot now, as I'm sure you guys do. And there's just so much going on that like, it's nice to just sit at home and do nothing with my, my girl, my oh, dog, and like that. watch TV, you know? Fuck. Like, I can't imagine how much you guys travel. I'm sure being home sometime than just like sitting on your couch, you're just like, Fuck, like I don't want to do anything. Yeah. Your uh, hobby the traveling, just like well, yeah. <laughs> you don't have any hobbies outside of this. You have to have something. So I, I just snowboard him. when I can. He didn't answer. He said he traveling. Golf or no? No, he just answered. I don't it. golf, no. He didn't say snowboarding when you asked him. 
Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> she, Chill, dude, you got it, dude. You got it. Chill the fuck out right now. Oh, my bad. Sorry. So sorry, dude. Don't get me here. pissed off. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, yeah, so I don't no want to piss you off, you sir. I've been on trend, so. <laughs> he said, you know what he's been saying the whole time before we came here? He's like, bro, I'm going to fucking inject myself with trend on this podcast live. I was like, Just you shouldn't do that. I was like, you should not do that. crazy or no? That'd be a little fucked up. Yeah, no, I'm that's not why sure I didn't do that it. would like help with the YouTube. Yeah, like, it's not you know? gonna help. Man. <laughs> I don't think they would also, really it's like not that. Not gonna make a difference. <laughs> that would be crazy. Like, but okay, you were saying snowboarding and. Uh... I mean, yeah, I mainly like to just chill, watch TV with my girl, and my dog, and then if we have the opportunity to go snowboarding, I do. But my coach hates it when I does because obviously, Injuries. if I hurt myself, yeah. like my career is going down the drain. But that's what that's definitely something where like I don't know if you guys do it, but when you're on the hill and you're just like music blasting, like chilling, it's just like peaceful, you know. Oh yeah. So where do you fun. go? Uh, we go to Aspen every year right Ooh, now that's dope. for oh, like yeah. eight to ten days. It's super chill. Yeah, we get oh, yeah. like a condo right at the bottom of Highlands, mm -hmm. and you just like walk out, eat breakfast, go up and down the hill all day. It's have you ever been out west, Canada? Once, yeah, I went to Banff when I was younger, younger, but I want to go out there again. It's dope there. How about, how about you? I've been yeah, Lake Louise, Fernie, BC. Yeah, it's dope there. L it's Lake crazy. Louise is crazy. Yeah. 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 So what what have you learned throughout your like? Your whole career on social media and in, in bodybuilding, what like what do you think really stands out to most the most to you as far as like finding success, like throughout your whole you know journey, like what stands out where you're like, man, this, I really learned this about success, or I learned this about what I thought it was going to be, or you know, did you have preconceived ideas about it, or like because you know you were you were a kid, you were like I'm into bodybuilding, I'm in work, I'm into sports, I'm into now I'm into working out, and I'm into bodybuilding, and now like a lot of motherfuckers are looking at you. Like, what have you learned about, because you have a ton of success now, what have you learned about that you didn't necessarily know then? I mean, I think, and I mean, it totally sounds typical, but it's because the truth. I think when I started, it was just like, I had just like, I want this, I want this, I want that. And when I started to get those things and accomplish them, and it was like, it doesn't leave you feeling like done or fulfilled. You start to realize that the goal isn't a championship or multiple championships or like having the business with the business succeeding or buying shit from it. It's more just like the growth you have and the journey and the adventures that you build along the way. The moments. And I think whenever I've like won the past few Olympias, the time I like most enjoy and most memorable is celebrating with the people I love. So like bringing them along my journey with me, it's elevated myself along with them and the moments that we've built together, kind of chasing things that I, they've come along with me and helped me. They know what I've been through and just being able to celebrate at the end and like being able to do it together. You know, like I feel like greatness is more of like a, it's more of a growth and elevating yourself and people around you. It's yeah. not just like a personal selfish success thing. It's like a societal like community thing where you're able to bring people together yeah. and up together. And I think it's probably, especially this year after Olympia, I don't know what it was, just feeling emotional after a big win. But I had so many people who like helped me come through a difficult Olympia this year with like the bicep tear and some other shit going on that it just made me so grateful for everyone I have at my back because I felt like I couldn't do it without them. And yeah. I was like, fuck this trophy, man. Like I have the most beautiful circle around me. Like what's more important than this? That's yeah. dope. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm, that's I'm super response. lucky. And I, I don't know, like, I always say I'm lucky. Maybe it's... I'm fired up. You know, so just some energy I'm able to attract or whatever yeah. the fuck it is. Or grateful. my purpose to, like, be able to give back what I learned. But I've had the best people come into my life and it's helped me stay super grounded. Yeah. What's your biggest piece of advice for some kid who wants to just become, like, something like you? <laughs> or just keep being in the gym and blow up or whatever? I would just say do it for yourself and the right reasons. You know, don't chase after something because someone else is doing it and it's cool or someone else did this and they got successful just you really have to be true to yourself and doing something that you love to do because otherwise it's not going to work out and you're going to get to the end of it and realize you wasted your fucking time on it i think the biggest thing you said is you did this before you wanted to turn it into like a, a career whole career yeah so that's why you're so successful yeah you agree with that i would say definitely it definitely helps it kind of relieves some of the like expectation and pressure on myself and it was just if I did it before because I loved it, why not keep doing it because I love it? And as long as you can kind of keep that in your mind going forward and not like detract onto the success and the money or bullshit going on, then you can keep going a lot longer for sure. Fuck yeah. I feel like most things are like that. Like most people have success. I think so. Yeah. Because like they really loved it and they go towards it and then, then it's it like makes the, it easier to fucking do, right? And continue Never quit. it. Yeah. Especially when it gets hard, right? And then you kind of find this balance of like, damn. You know, because shit's not going to be easy. And I think if you're doing it just because you're trying to get some sort of outcome, become, you know, Mr. Olympia or make a bunch of money, then if you don't get it the way you think you should get it, people tend to like fall out from it or try something else or do something different because they didn't really give a fuck about it to begin with. Yeah. So, if, you know, that most people have success at the high level because like they really just love it. 
And, and that's why they're able to continue to do it instead of, oh, I'm going to make money or I'm going to get famous or whatever the fuck else it is. It's attached to it. For sure. Yeah. So that's I think that's totally why you have you'll, it. It's, you'll never have control over an outcome. Yeah. Like no matter what you do, no matter how good I am, no matter how hard I work, I will never have control of the outcome that I'm going to win the Olympia. So if my happiness is attached to that, my happiness is attached to something out of my control and I'm just like hands up in the air like maybe I'll be happy after this, maybe I'll hate myself, you know? Yeah. Which like I'm not willing to relinquish that control over my life because it's not worth it. Yeah. And I mean, people hear it so often of like the typical old rich dude who's miserable with his life because all he did was work his whole life. And it's like, why do we all hear these stories over and over again? And then everyone's still just like, yeah, I get it. But like, I still want it. You know? Why do you think it's hard for people to understand that though? Because everyone says the same thing. You everyone probably get caught the up in thing. the moment, right? Yeah. I think you definitely get caught up in it. And I think social media definitely plays a yeah. big thing now. You know, yeah. the, the highlight reels, the bullshit people put out there of being like the big people on social media who like, people think are happy are the ones posting like nice cars pjs all this right. kind of shit you know and it just builds a false reality but it's hard to say yeah once you started to blow up and all that is there anything like one thing you really had to give up or something you couldn't pay as much attention to that just bothers you now uh, i mean recently i've had, it's been difficult that i left my family to move down here you know i'm like close with my parents and my like grandparents are like past or getting really old and i'm when you start to see how like short life is i'm like fuck i'm down here so far away from my family I only get to see them once or twice a year for a short period of time and i don't have a lot a long time with them left anymore and i kind of miss that connection i had living close to them all the time so i think that definitely sucked and i mean i'm preaching to the choir the fucking guy who said don't wait to be happy but i'm like kind of like waiting like when parents retire hopefully i can move them down here or something and like you know, I sh maybe I should be sacrificing more time to go up there and spend time with them or something. But it's definitely a battle I have currently, but it's the point of my life right now. And at least when I do see my parents, I'm able to actually enjoy the time with them more now because it is more scarce. So I'm able to make it more meaningful. But it still sucks just not seeing them all the time because I was a huge sure. family guy. So. I what feel you. you. Steve, I'm with all the right answers tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Holy You're shit. a wise guy, bro. I like it. Yeah, like, for real. I'm not even trolling. It's all that journaling, you know? You're yeah, real exactly. as fuck. There you go. There you go. Yeah, Steve, I'm I have one, too. You got to pick up the... Oh, you got one? Yeah, it's at the Airbnb. You, oh, okay. You have, like, a zap journal, eh? <laughs> 3, <laughs> 3 a.m. monologue. Right. 3 a.m. diaries. He has all these books of just... I can't fall asleep right now. It's Dear Brad. My heart's beating fucking... What'd you say? I said, Dear Brad. Yeah, you in the journal, bro. I'm sorry I made fun of you for giving me such a good idea fucking asshole. No, that's good. The like Zap it. journal. Um, <laughs> I, I'm curious, like, if you didn't do bodybuilding, what else do you think you'd be doing? That's a great question. And someone, someone I get all the time, and I don't know, because in school, it was, school was brutal. <laughs> I thought yeah. I was going to become a physiotherapist. Okay. And it, like, that's a lot of fucking school. I was, like, seven years. Yeah. It's like becoming a doctor almost. I'm not even as hard. But as I was going through, I think something at the time I was thinking I might like, because of the impact they had on my life, was becoming, like, a high school teacher. Oh, wow. I had a few teachers where like I was never like a piece of shit kid, but I definitely started to stray more into like, you know, stopping trying to school, stopping playing in sports, more hanging with my friends Bullshit. and fucking off. Yeah. Bullshitting. And then they tried to like pull me back onto the right path and definitely helped me a little bit with my mind. And I feel like that's a huge part in any kid teenager's life where they're about to enter the real world, yeah. where any kind of role model can really have a huge impact and help Absolutely. them or where they take this next journey. And I felt like a, I randomly liked high school biology, so I felt like I could have taught that. Could have been a good gym teacher, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. also help people. Hopefully, yeah, you would have been a yeah. you would have been a beauty gym teacher. Right. Imagine, yeah. imagine a different life. You're just a gym teacher. Just a gym teacher. Fuck, <laughs> wild. You'd have eh? crushed that. So, yeah, you never know. Damn, could happen. So, so after all this stuff, what do you what do you focus on? Are you gonna do like acting? Are you gonna try and do something like in that line? Are you you know you going the like full Arnold route? No, I don't think I could act. I even if like we're doing like random marketing ads and shit and i have like a script i have to You're read like, i like fuck. can't do it i can't <laughs> i can't even read it and Yo. if people are like all right act more enthusiastic i'm like i can't i just like monotonely say it. i like that's funny I can't, I can't act it feels too awkward it feels yeah. just fake you know and maybe that's just my like anxious insecurities overthinking it yeah but i, I can't ever picture myself trying to act unless the i'm business like the quiet for guy you. The business route for you is like, that's the dope, business man. Is I mean, definitely the goal, yeah. The subs, yeah, sure. the energy drink, that's going to be. We mentioned, I think we were in the bathroom, but like, I'm very much looking forward to hopefully because I'm establishing all this in my life now in business. If I'm able to like pull back and retire and be like a present father at a certain point in my life, yeah. If I'm lucky enough to have <laughs> Oh, they asked you the kid question? <laughs> no, no, no. He, he, he just said too. it. He just said it himself. And they were making fun of you too, saying that all gym bros just want to be fathers, apparently. Oh, <laughs> so I was gone and they were dogging me. Makes sense. <laughs> I, was all course, yeah. I want to be a dad so bad, man. Fuck. 
nothing more rewarding than that, you know? Yeah. Boy, girl, whatever it is, being able to like raise someone, especially how fucked up our world is right now. Yeah. I hear a lot of people be like, oh, I don't want a kid in this world. I'm like, this is the opportunity to bring someone in the Change world who can actually that's help. That's a good point. Yeah. Or be the better generation, so, you know? Did you guys talk about you wanting to have a kid? Or like, is that something that's on the way for you and your girl? Are you thinking about that? We've talked about it. You know, we're engaged right now. We're getting married in like 2024. We don't have an exact date yet. Congrats. We've spoken about it. We both want okay. a family. So kind of, I, I definitely want to be done competing at the time. I want to make sure I'm healthy. Yeah. And I want to make sure I'm able to be invested as a father. Yeah. So when the time comes, hopefully in a few years or so, then it's a goal, yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's that's huge, man. Then they, then they, you know, call you Daddy C Bum for real. Daddy C Bum, they <laughs> real for real. They yeah. fully like you just turn into Little that. Well, Bum Junior, you know, fucking dope, yeah. man. That's awesome. So that's some crazy merch. That's a big merch drop right there. Oh, too, we're right? gonna come up with the whole kids line. <laughs> <laughs> Little kids pre workout. No, yeah, that's that's not good. That's not good. You want to fucking say that? People get um, people get sued for that right now. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. That's not good. Um, did you hear about the TikTok thing getting banned? What? TikTok is probably going to get banned. It sounds, it seems like, like it. The whole TikTok. It seems like it. Have you? I've been reading more about this. I think it's just all business, but yeah. I don't probably. really know. I mean, it's all money at the end. Do it's you, all do money. You, do you like TikTok? Do you use it? I use it. I don't. I don't like scroll through it, but yeah. I post on it to like have another platform. I just recently started doing more on it, but it's not like my favorite. Definitely. Yeah, it's a lot. It's probably a it's couple a decision makers in government, and who's going to pay them more, YouTube or TikTok? Man, and that's going to be the decision. Probably I that was a big Google. China thing last time I heard about it, but yeah, that's yeah. that's the main like that's why it's kind of on the chopping block. Yeah. It's like oh, it's just spies or some shit. I don't know what they're saying. I mean, the data obviously they do collect is crazy, right? Oh, for sure, you saw yeah. that Joe Rogan clip. Yeah, it's crazy. Apparently, they get in like your phone swipe. They know what you're. They know what you're typing and shit. Yeah, I saw that. That's insane. They're tracking like yeah, what you're typing. They probably know even if it's open in the background what you're doing on other apps. Exactly, oh, yeah. that's what yeah, they're saying. Yeah. Oh, like okay, what you're yeah. typing in other apps. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what do you? What'd you say? I think it's also like if you're signed into your Apple ID on like your laptop. They also like you're giving them access to any yeah. device that you're signed into. Well, how yeah. does that shit even work? Wait, they know like, your search history or no? Bro, you're cooking except. Yeah. Look, he's they getting all worried it. about his search history right now. Yeah, Are you bro. Sure they know that or no? They know all that. They give you the contract right there and they, Dude, you have to click accept. You're fucked, man. Your shit's going to come out. We've been banging on doors lately. Yeah. They're coming for you. I'm good. We're good? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. What's your PR on bench? <laughs> Two plates. Fuck yeah. Me too. Not what? Bad. Yeah. Steiny as strong as you? No, no Steiny is not. Steiny is lying about his. Fuck yeah. I got you. I love Sebum, bro. <laughs> bro, you're not hitting two plates. <laughs> Let me get some raw nutrition. <laughs> One rep, that's I'll it. Like, so. and barely. Hey, bro, you you are. Energy drink. Right. Like, I'll get, I'll get barely. Thank you. Yeah. Huh? You know I'm pretty strong, bro. We but you're not hitting two plates. Don't lie to him. Just One time, yeah. In the right scenario. I want to get Jack, bro. He's got a sleeper build. Fuck. I know. It's really hard. We've been talking about that lately. Like, Well, it's hard with the lifestyle, too, right? Yeah. If I was at home for like. I don't know. If I just lived a normal life, I'm sure it'd be a lot easier. But bro, bro, like that. What's for that me, like it's for traveling. you guys though, because you guys travel a lot. But your lifestyle, happy dad, like my branding is working out. Exactly. Your branding is partying. What exactly. Is that, like um, is that something you kind of feel like you're going to be able to sustain or? Yeah, I mean, it's, I definitely just like I've accepted now too. Like I don't like do the stuff that I used to do. Like even the hangovers now are just like you physically they're, can't oh, do man. it. Like yeah. it I'm, yeah, I'm 28 too old, now, so. Yeah. But like, it's just not the same as when you're 21, 22, 23, yeah. right? So it's a lot more balanced now too. But yeah, there is, I've just gotten a lot more better now at like saying no, I think. Like even last night we get to Miami, everyone's like, let's go out, let's go out. I was like, we're not going out. Like we're not going out tonight. Like yeah, straight up, like, we're waking up early, we're going to the gym. Like you gotta, you just gotta say no a lot more. Make better you gotta be is strong. Is there anything that we can do with this lifestyle that could help us see more results? I mean, right there, priorities. Choose what you want and prioritize it. Say no. And how uh, often do you drink? It's diet though for me. Like on the road too. Like I'm kind of like, what? I'm like the guy like. You guys got to get a chef coming with you. We have a chef at home. So that's what's good. You came to travel with you. I know. Remember like, you were wait, super wait, consistent wait. during the, the whole COVID was, times? Yeah. You got jacked. I mean, that was like four years ago too though. So my oh. metabolism was probably a little See, COVID lighter. COVID was actually time to get jacked. Yeah, it was. nothing else to do. Why are you looking at me like that, by the way? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm looking at these guys. Um, Are you okay? How often do you drink, Seabum? Twice a year now, maybe? Twice a year? Wow, hey, we, we got we a shot right now? We're part of the twice. <laughs> this is, this is well, three, one day. Three this year. Three this year. So, are you well, like, so let's make this day count then. Yes. Oh, bro, we got to go all the way. Going, guys. What the fuck? Can you come out with us for the day? Tonight. Yes. Depends where you're going, what you're doing. That's a no. That's no, a think, no. I know about no, I think we're just, get my girl down here. You know? I, think oh. we're just, I think we're just day drinking today. That's so funny. Seabum, you got to come with He's got to drive, bro. 
No, you came with three people, nah, I thought. That's 100% a bodybuilder, no. He ain't going nowhere, dude. We got two free bodyguards. <laughs> I know that's a no. I know a no when I, I like you guys, We're hitting, you guys we're hitting two spots right after, after this. What are they called? I would go out. We're going he's to Rock in, he's Bar. He's in. We're going to Rock Bar on the Wharf. He's in. They both carry hat. Why are you trying to talk him out of it? Bro, he's 100% not drinking. Are you guys like boozing tonight or are you going around to like I think, PR for Happy Dad? No, we're going to go around to two spots after this and like have a few drinks. Casuals, bro. We're not getting wild. Come with. You in or out? You in or out? Huh? Let's all keep. Let's keep our shirts on and shit too, though. Yeah, like maybe put some pants on too. I gotta go back and change then. That was the funniest shit you said the whole time. (laughs) What? That was good. Can I borrow your pants if we go? I'm gonna just be like you. You guys maybe walk in front, like, and just be like, like security guards. (laughs) Hey, dude, dressing all black. Thanks, man. Fuck you. I get that all the time. Fuck. You must get that. I think this was really good, dude. Sebum, you're the. Fucking You're the fucking go, man. Bro. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys. Yeah. You fired oh, yeah. me up Thank too, you, just with some, I don't know, just good vibes, wisdom. Yeah, time yeah. to prioritize. Good energy. You saying no? Yeah. Get you jacked up. Your discipline's unmatched, bro. If I ever come back on this, I expect both of you guys to be jacked up. Yeah. We'll let you know when that time comes. For sure. Yeah. We'll do the podcast. It's gonna then. take a long time. <laughs> See you in dude. ten years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take a long time. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming, bro. Z-Bum, the appreciate fucking go. Oh, wait. no, dude. <laughs> Brad's been waiting. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> All right, wait. Let's just let's just figure this out real quick, too. Okay. What what does Brad have you, like, dude, in? what are you doing? No, in, like, the gym bro sector. Like, does Brad have you in anything or, like? Oh, my God, dude. Uh, he's taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got size. But, I mean, like, a lifting thing, like, or anything like that? I honestly think his PRs are probably all over mine. All more than mine. Why Come are you on. doing this? I'm just curious, bro. Did I'm not here to be like I'm fucking. I'm stronger than this guy in his fucking interview, dude. I'm not like. <laughs> oh, you weren't saying that on the way no. here, bro. What are you talking about? I'm not even saying none of this. You come just, just to talk me. shit in the car right here, bro. I've not down. been talking no shit. He's Wait, the whole time. My last thing is like, what about like the world's strongest man when they try and throw the like big boulders over the thing? Yeah, dude, this is hilarious. He did talk about this. What like what? what's that all about? And what is a do completely that? different fucking thing? <laughs> I cannot do that. No? no, those guys are like four hundred pounds. No, they're like oh, they're six big. nine. You're gonna get roasted yeah. by the bodybuilding community. For that. It's not bodybuilding, bro. <laughs> Strong men, bodybuilding, powerlifting, all different things. Okay, would you ever transition to women's and compete in women's and then be Mrs. Olympia? What? Would you, you ask me if I was gonna transition? Okay, sorry, I'm just a clean. Dude, that. what the all hell? All right, we're good, Sebum. All, all right, yeah, right. let's let's Hold end this. <laughs> let's, that, that's enough. I had to fire that. Right. Sebum's <laughs> a goat. Thank you so much, bro. Yeah, let's go. We should get it. That was awesome.